What's the level of concern around Jets OTA with Rodgers' cap? There. Really? Big zero. No, there, there, there's no real concern over Aaron Rodgers having a serious injury. This was a very mild strain, and they're going to take it easy because it's – early June here, end of May. So they're going to be conservative about it. And, and what really stood out and, and what you can observe is Aaron Rodgers is out on the field, right? So, Nick, you guys know this, that, you know, a lot of players, when they're dealing with injuries, they'll go inside and rehab and spend the day. Sometimes they'll even take the day off. But not Rodgers, right? He's out there. He's essentially like a co-head coach at this point out on the field. And this is something that has been welcomed by his teammates, right? They love having his voice. Some players even saying they believe – He's going to change their career completely, whether they're on the offensive or defensive side of the ball. But the good news, according to head coach Robert Sala, they do expect Aaron Rodgers to be out there on Friday. Okay. Uh, Nick, listen, uh, I know he had the same kind of injury last season. Should there be some concern? There absolutely should be some concern about this. I'm not saying that this calf injury is going to be a problem, but he's going to be 40 at some point in the season. And I'm sorry, Robert Sala, but – your body kind of is your age. That's the one thing that you can't cheat. At some point, there's no amount of exercise or stretching or anything that's going to bring back resilience of your muscles and joints and ligaments. It's a thing. Older players, it's going to impact the way that they play. And I think we're looking at Tom Brady as if he's the blueprint for this. But Aaron Rodgers was never that type of quarterback. He always had a, a little dash of athleticism that helped him play. The, the vintage Aaron Rodgers play that we look at is when he's kind of scrambling, making a terrific pass on the run that's not what we're familiar with when it comes to Tom Brady so we'll see how it impacts him it's a very good chance that he could make it through this whole season without an injury but once you get older those things tend to pop up a little more often what do you think Sam well, I couldn't agree more. That's the thing. You look at it. In 2021, there's a toe fracture. In 2022, there's a thumb fracture. And I get it. Aaron Rodgers plays through a ton of these injuries. But sooner or later, all these injuries start to pile up on your body as you get older, as age comes and times comes, time comes, and you get hit a little bit more. It takes longer to recover. And so this injury may not be that huge of a deal, but it may be a sign of things to come, just like we've seen the history over the last few seasons with Aaron Rodgers being injured listen I know Jet fans don't want to see this die uh, hear this Diana but one thing I noticed I saw a lot of Zach Wilson yeah yeah and, and look he's he's obviously been out there with the team he's taking all the first team reps and he just seems to be getting more comfortable right his accuracy is something that they're always going to be working on but Robert Sala has been raving about what he's seen in, in the backup quarterback who we've seen plenty of, at least in, we'll see plenty of until we see Aaron Rodgers healthy once again. And that's obviously going to be the plan if Aaron can't go. And the hope is that they can just build his confidence back up. Because remember, before they signed Aaron Rodgers, there was a lot of concern. And, and Nick and I had tons of conversations on the show about where does Zach Wilson go from here mentally? How do you recover from a team basically going, you're just not good enough. We're going to go out there and get one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game. And you're going to sit back and you're going to learn and you're going to try to improve. And, and that's where we're at. But it seems that Aaron Rodgers' presence is doing, any, doing, doing nothing but helping Zach Wilson improve, get better, and really take a look at what he needs to improve on. Are the Giants a real possibility yeah, you for look, DeAndre Hopkins? You look at this roster that, that has really been stacked up now, right, for, for Daniel Jones. And, of course, the New York Giants are going to do their homework and research and take a look at the market. But here's what's really interesting, Brian. Right now, because Odell Beckham Jr. signed with the Baltimore Ravens for a, a really good price, right, they paid him a lot of money. And some of that had to do with the fact that the Lamar Jackson situation was going on. They wanted to appease him. It changed the wide receiver market, right? So DeAndre Hopkins wants to get paid the type of money that we saw Odell Beckham Jr. get paid. Not that same exact amount, but money's definitely part of this. And financially, we are looking at all the teams around the league that are interested in DeAndre Hopkins. It's got to work financially for them. So you look at teams like the Chiefs, the Bills. You heard Nick talk about them being a good fit for them. Do they have the money? And would Hopkins be willing to maybe take less to play with a quarterback like Josh Allen or, let's say, Patrick Mahomes? And it's really going to come down to what he prefers and what he wants, as there are several teams, including the New England Patriots, who are interested in DeAndre Hopkins. And we're going to see over the next few weeks Hopkins taking visits with different teams, Brian, and he's going to make a decision on what's best for him. Okay, Acho, if the Giants were to sign Hopkins, how would he help? them, especially in that NFC East. 
Oh, he'd make him extremely dangerous. If you look at it last year, Saquon Barkley led the team in receptions and targets. He's a running back. And so you add a guy not only in Darren Waller, then you go and add DeAndre Hopkins to a team that not only made the playoffs last year, but won a playoff game. And then in Brian Dayball, coach of the year, his second season, they would be a lot more dangerous than they were before. You have a true number one receiver target. Then you have a true number one tight end target. And then if Saquon gets all his stuff worked out in his deal and he ends up signing this long-term deal or franchise tag, then you have a dominant running back as well. And so add all those pieces to Brian Dayball and his genius taking Daniel Jones to what he was before to what he is now. Now you have an extremely dangerous team that could really make some noise come playoff time. Nick, what do you think? Yeah, you had Jalen Hyatt, a big play receiver they drafted out of Tennessee to that offense. It looks a lot better than they had looked in a while there. However, they're in the NFC East, and I think they're still not going to be as good as the Cowboys and certainly not as good as the Eagles. So while I think it'll make them a little bit better, I'm not sure that's what DeAndre Hopkins is looking for at the end of his career to go pair it with Daniel Jones, who is their franchise quarterback in New York, but I'm not sure that's a quarterback that – that DeAndre Hopkins will want to tie himself to if he's looking to be competitive and make a run at the Super Bowl. I think some of these other names might be a little bit more attractive, especially if anyone's expecting him to take less than uh, his value. You know, that's interesting because you hear Neek talking about some of the additions they made, you know, whether it be Hyatt, Bill, whether it be Waller. So are we expecting, let's say, a, a big jump or a slump out of Daniel Jones? Look, I, I, my questions are more about Daniel Jones on this Giants roster than, than the talent around him, right? Because I feel like even though we've seen plenty of him, the opinion of him is still a little confusing. Is he good? Is he great? Is he okay? I think we can all agree that Brian Dable has given the, or shown that he can coach the best version of Daniel Jones. So as long as Dable's there coaching him up, that, that there's going to be – improvement but but what is the ceiling for Daniel Jones and you have to figure they're doing everything they possibly can they've invested in this guy now they're giving him options it has to get better here but we know that there's always that chance hey Nick they paid him like he's a franchise guys are we expecting a jump or a slump out of Daniel Jones this season well, if my only two options are jump or slump, I'm going to go with jump because this will be his second year with Brian Dayball. Some coaching stability will be nice. The talent around him is as good as it's ever been, assuming they get Saquon to sign and come back into, into the fold. So I guess I got to go with jump. But the tough thing about what you're asking for Daniel Jones is we haven't seen him do a, a whole lot of great passing, and you can blame that on the weapons that he has. But we can also say that we haven't seen him do it. So until we've seen him successfully be a consistent passer, to combine with his great running ability. It's hard for me to have a ton of faith in him, but I think I do believe in what he's shown so far, and I believe in Brian Dayball, and I certainly believe in the additions that they brought in as far as talent's concerned. So a tiny jump, maybe a little baby jump? Uh, <laughs> I, Joe, I'll give you the final word. Man, I'm going big jumps. Forget the baby jumps, the tiny jumps, right? Like, I'm talking about, like, the box jumps, like 66-inch box jumps that you see freak athletes oh, doing. The no. reason I say that is this. Let me check, check me out. Last year, we saw 15 touchdowns, which is not a lot, right? But only five interceptions. That's the second lowest interceptions thrown for anyone who threw over 250 passes. And so now you increase the, the touchdowns. You keep the interceptions at a minimum. You add Brian Dable, who did the same thing with Josh Allen. No, this is not Josh Allen. But you add that second year with the weapons. I'm expecting a much, much bigger jump for Daniel Jones. Wouldn't DeAndre Hopkins be great for the Dallas Cowboys? Yeah, I like Hopkins as a fit for the Cowboys because I think Cooks is a guy that's supposed to stretch the defense. He's going to take the roof off the defense and run deep routes and scare him. I think that you got CeeDee Lamb as kind of a big play receiver. You give him short passes or gadget plays that he can turn into bigger plays. And then you need a reliable third down guy, a guy that you know, even when he's covered, he's shorthanded. You can put it up in his direction and he can make plays. So I think you look at this entire roster, he does fit. I think Hopkins does fit with the Cowboys right now. That's not where I would address if I was the Cowboys. I think trying to solidify that offensive line is probably more important. But if this free agent is available and he wants to play with a proven quarterback, and that's what you got in Dallas and have a chance at a Super Bowl, you got that all that with the Cowboys. So I could see this being a match made in heaven for them. Diana, how much yeah. of a possibility is it 
for yeah. DeAndre Hopkins and the Cowboys. So normally when Greeny sits here, I just tell him what he wants to hear. Right. right? So tell it's like, yes, the yes. Jets are all yes. in. They're, tell they're, me they that. signed Hopkins yesterday. Uh, the Jets are not interested in DeAndre Hopkins at this point, by the way. But for your team, for the Dallas Cowboys, I don't get the sense that he is an option for them. Look, all teams – are looking at this, but the, there's this level of seriousness, right? Like, I, for example, I had one executive in the league say to me, look, if he wants to make $2 mil a year, yeah, we'll take him, right? So money is a big issue. And obviously the Dallas opened up some space here, and, and, and they could look into that. But from the conversations I had, Dallas, the Dallas Cowboys are not on the board. Uh, Sam Acho, do you think DeAndre Hopkins, Dallas Cowboys make sense? No, it doesn't. And it's not because of his talent or cast space or anything. It's because historically, Jerry Jones doesn't usually spend big on free agents in the offseason. We talk about it all the time. Man, last year, are they going to get Odell Beckham Jr.? What's going to happen? We talk about it ad nauseum and nothing. Right? You look at that. Like, his, if you're a Cowboys fan, you're saying, man, we want to get better, but we usually trade away some of our big pieces. We're not trade away. Maybe we might not sign them, right? Look at a guy like Amari Cooper. Remember, you got rid of Amari Cooper. And then you look at, man, like all the talk and the rumors but it usually doesn't happen if you're a Cowboys fan. And so that's why I'm saying that it's not going to be, it's just not realistic because that's not what Jerry Jones does. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.